I'm Yudit Chandor, the director of the Center for Ethics and Law, CILAB at CU. We are living in difficult times. The COVID-19 took the life of more than 130,000 people around the world, and more than 2 million people were infected. These are very strong figures, although, of course, countries had very different strategies how to tackle this pandemic, and they have different testing protocols, different measures which they had to take. But we also have to see that uh, there are severe ethical and legal challenges in the current situation. So I would like to say something about the bioethical dimension of this current situation. One strong message which I would like to emphasize that in these extraordinary circumstances, bioethical principles and human rights principles are not suspended. Healthcare uh, sector had to make some prioritization, and of course, we citizens, we all were requested to help to flatten the curve, which means that we try to minimize human contact. So once, if someone needs uh, urgent medical care in the intensive care unit because of the coronavirus, there will not be too many uh, patients uh, in the same time so that the healthcare sector will be able to deal with all these patients and they don't have to make such a uh, harsh decisions, such difficult decisions, which some doctors, for instance, in Italy at the intensive care unit had to take when there were uh, lots of patients were in critical conditions in the same time. This situation is a test of humanity. The political leaders has to show emotional intelligence to decrease the mental burden on people. And transparency is also very important, that we got a reliable information. Information is crucial. Uh, people who take the, uh, these measures had to explain the reasons, had to consult people, had to uh, include the medical professionals, epidemiologists in this decision, because we can better comply when we understand also the reasons uh, behind these measures. And uh, we all have to remember uh, the case of Li Wenliang, who was sanctioned, the Chinese ophthalmologist, who was the first to warn the world that this virus can spread from human to human, which was a very essential information for the whole world and also for the WHO in January. And I think that this case also shows that we should not sanction whistleblowers in this situation it's very essential we'll get the crucial information in time, and it's important to get warnings in time. Council of Europe recently um, adopted principles which are applicable during the time of the COVID-19, and they confirm that the principles of healthcare should be also equal and should be guided by medical criteria and uh, the, they have to take care of the most vulnerable people as well. So the people with the disabilities, elderly, refugees, and those who are victims of discrimination. And uh, restrictions should be prescribed by the law if they have to make some uh, restrictions, for instance, in collecting healthcare data, and special conditions might be applicable in clinical emergencies, but they also have to be based on professional standards. It's also important the Article 3 of the Oviedo Convention, the equitable access to healthcare, and also Article 4 in the professional standards. Many people have hopes that artificial intelligence and new technologies can help us to tackle this pandemic, and of course, uh, they are already being used in monitoring the literature, making predictions, having some kind of uh, 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 follow-up, or for instance, they have been used also of uh, the body temperature uh, measures, some technologies, the cameras were introduced in some airports when more than 200 people could have been uh, measured. And they also used in analyzing X-ray, CT images. They try to assess the severity of certain uh, conditions. But of course, they have also some drawbacks. For instance, uh, they mentioned the, the X-ray, uh, CT scans are used uh, much less in uh, these times because they are also afraid of the contamination. 
But regardless how much we can use this technology, which is hopeful and hopefully that it's really help us to find some new uh, measures against this uh, dangerous uh, virus, it is important that uh, uh, the use should be benevolent. There are certain measures of social control, uh, tracing people's contacts, which can be done in harmony with the uh, basic principles of privacy. And there are such measures which are going beyond this. So I think that uh, without uh, thinking on ethics and human rights, we cannot be successful even in these difficult times. And we should maintain the ethical principles in order to tackle these difficult conditions.